in addition to your criminal record, it is important to know that once you got elected, do you actually attend parliament? Do you actually attend the house in which you've been elected? Now, in most colleges in the country, if you don't have close to 75% attendance, you are not even allowed to sit for the examination. This is the simplest test that we put all elected representatives to. And for example, let's look at Mr. Milindevra and how he fares on this account. Just one second. I'm not familiar with how to use uh, this version of... Uh... Yeah, okay. Right, yeah. All right, now we all think that this person is a very, very honest and very uh, attentive MP. But if you look at his attendance record, he has attended parliament only 88% of the time which is good, but certainly is not perfect. Because as a member of parliament, the constitution of India first says that his first duty is to attend parliament. The second duty is, once you attend parliament, it is not sufficient to just go there and be a sitting duck. It is important to be asking questions. It is important to be participating in debates. The next parameter looks at how often do you actually ask questions in parliament, giving you a sense of how participative somebody is in the city. The next parameter that we assess you on, uh, or assess elected representatives on, is the number of bills that they have introduced in Parliament. Finally, we assess you based on the amount of money that the Government of India gives you as part of the MPLAD funds, and what is it that you've actually done with it. Now this, over here, only captures the percentage of the money that you were given. How much of it has actually gone into the streets? In the Mumbai Votes MP report card, which we put out every year, and I'll give you a brief snapshot of it as my concluding component of this exercise, we actually look at whether your spending is consistent with what you promised. So while standing for elections, you might have promised that I'm going to be taking care of education, I'm going to be taking care of crime, but all your spending might have been on building parking lots, might have been on building malls, might have, might have been on building luxury leisure facilities for the upper middle class, and hence you are inconsistent with what you said. So even the spending parameter is actually dissected and looked at from a promise versus performance perspective. And here is another very interesting and final point about Mr. Milindevra is he is considered to be a very progressive member of parliament who believes in youth, who believes in progressive ideas such as using sports to create change amongst the community in supporting various kinds of social initiatives. However, we were shocked when we learned that the first five years when he was in power, the only parliamentary committee that he bothered to become a part of was the defense committee. So if you look at this one, this is the committee that he has maximum amount of time spent in, in terms of contributing to the Indian parliament. Now, while elections, he never mentioned anything about his agenda for being part of India's defense program. But as you can see, his performance is quite contradictory to what he had claimed. Now, this is again information which is there in the public domain, and if you knew this, five years down the line, that Mr. Milindera, you promised certain things, but you perform in measurable ways in something completely different. These are things that the person cannot hide behind. All right. So now this is done for every elected representative, but how do you go about now bringing all this information together and looking at them from a macro perspective? How do people stack up against each other? And Mr. Viresh, what I'll do is I'll finally end with a brief snapshot of what the Mumbai Votes MP report card looks like, uh, which is published every year. We started this uh, this year for the first time. Kindly bear with me. Uh, this report card is currently available on our website for free download and is currently available even on Flipkart. We are selling this as a book, as a booklet to have in your back pocket year on year, just like you have a coffee table book about you know, products and services. This is a coffee table book to have about the performances of your elected representatives. All right, so the first thing that we do is, uh, I don't know if it's very visible, is if you look at the attendance in parliament of the various elected representatives in Mumbai, we use a scale called, if you're less than 70% attendance, you are a ghost because you've barely been to parliament. If you're 70 to 80%, you are hospitalized. If you're 80 to 90%, you're healthy. Beyond that, you're a live wire. Now, this is information which, of course, is data, but has been converted to information that we can all use. Now, politicians might disagree with using these kinds of strong words, but they cannot hide behind the numbers. And here's a startling fact. In the last two years, which this report card covers, the parliament was in session only for 158 days out of 720. Imagine an office which requires you to attend office only once every four days, and even that you don't do 100%. That's a pretty strong number. All right. Uh, going on to the next parameter, we talked about 
the questions that are asked by our elected representatives. And here is what is, again, very surprising. A lot of us feel that the young MPs are the ones who are most active in Parliament. The first thing that this approach busts is all myths about age versus activity. For example, the youngest MP in the Parliament currently is Mrs. Priyadat and Mr. Milind Devra. If you look at the number of questions that they've asked compared to other people, they're actually much lower. And Mrs. Milind, uh, Mrs. Priyadat here is less than half of the average national Indian average of questions asked during session in Parliament. Okay, now, what happened was during the last year, when we looked at the number of questions asked, a lot of the MPs had asked questions about what we think are relatively frivolous things. About cricket, about making sure we don't play matches against Pakistan, making sure that, you know, names of roads are changed and those kinds of things. Things that we all consider to be relatively frivolous. However, we decided that we can't be using, again, our standard. So what we did was we looked at the quality of questioning in comparison to the promises that you have made. So if you look at uh, the right-hand side of the bar, every time an elected representative asked at least one question in Parliament about an issue which they claim to be their top issue, they got a, a green bar versus every time they asked less than one question per session, they got a red bar, which shows how consistent you are in your questioning again. Moving on uh, to a couple of the other parameters. Okay. Now here is where we looked at the various parliamentary committees that all the elected representatives are part of. Now it's very important to know that you know, older politicians who've been around for a while, they have a wealth of experience to draw from. So this almost looks at, at it from the perspective of a train. The number of compartments shows the various committees that you're a part of. And by looking at the names of the committees that they are part of, you can get a sense of what this person believes in and what this person truly cares about versus what they promised. All right, so for example, here you can see Mr. Milindevra, his committees are primarily defense, urban development, IT, civil aviation, and and industries and public enterprise. But he claims that education is a part of his agenda, that he should have been on this committee as well. Because you are allowed to be a part of any committee that you want in Parliament. Okay. Uh, on the left is, again, the spending patterns. And we look at the amount of money that came in from the funnel. Every year, a corporate, an MP in India gets two crores to spend on their local so constituencies. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, so this is a parameter that tells you the percentage of money that they have spent uh, on, uh, on the various developmental issues. And on the right is a final consistency analysis of every article that appeared in media about you versus your own manifesto and your own video interview. A green flag tells you how many instances were you consistent with and how many instances were you inconsistent with. So if you are in the red flag category, you have been relatively inconsistent compared to your other fellow MPs. All right. All said and done, what we do is we give you a way of finally, uh, I'm going to skip through this section just to save time. Eventually, what is the purpose of doing all of this? Now, frankly, nothing is going to happen by just reading the report card and going back home and then voting the person out every five years. What we are currently running is a campaign where we let the MPs know that the MP report card was read by you and that you are watching them. We've given you the cell phone numbers of the PAs and the MPs themselves to let them know by SMS, by phone, by email, that you are being watched. And eventually, that is the overall goal of Mumbai Votes, is vigilance of the people that you've elected. Um, any other questions that we have about the movement, we can deal with during the panel discussion. And I'm sorry that I went overboard. I hopefully feel that uh, if you all find this movement interesting, please do visit the website. Please do download the report card. And we are here to start replicating the movement across the various cities of India. So please do ask questions about how we can do this in Kolkata, in Chennai, in various other cities that you're from. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Vivek. That was really, and I'm sorry that I had to no, no, cut I down this fantastic presentation, but uh, paucity of time, we've got three more, we've got four more speakers after lunch. Right. Uh, but thank you very much. But the website is there. Vivek is here. And we bring him back again. So do take advantage, uh, we will not have a question and answer now, but over lunch maybe you can have some discussions and I'm sure they're available over the email, then you can visit their website as well as give them a call. So what we will do is that we will come back in half an hour if that's alright with you. It's now quarter to two in my watch, we'll be back here by quarter past two. So thank you once again panelists, it's been great to hear you. Thank you for making the time, three of you have come from outside Calcutta, thank you very much for making the effort. Thank you very much. Thank you.